my biggest excuse for decades for not owning or being in a position that I wanted to be in my life was because my father did not raise me. And there are countless number of scientific studies and proof that substantiate that claim. If you are raised in this country or anywhere else on this planet without a father, you lack that guidance that a father is supposed to provide. As a father, I see it every single day. I take note of what are my son's deficiencies and I'm able to correct it right away. However, if you're not there 24 seven, taking a look at what mistakes that person must correct, especially if you're raising boys, boys, they encounter all kinds of problems that women do not know how to deal with. You're getting into fights. It's more physical. When you're a boy, you're getting roughed up and you have to know how to rough people back up. So you have to be in a position where you could protect yourself physically, mentally. You gotta be mentally and physically tough. Sometimes a mother can't handle that, especially when you got kids as wild as me and my brother. I used to get in all kinds of trouble. She couldn't take me. She couldn't hold me down. She couldn't control me by the time I was 15. So I had to leave my house and all of the guidance that I was supposed to get from a father. She actually sent me to my father's house. He only kept me there for about a month. Then he called his father once he found out I wanted to go back to New York. This happened in Florida and sent me out to New York City. And there, my grandfather finished raising me. I was an older guy. He's probably the closest thing I've ever had to a biological father. However, when you lack the strong guidance of a father, you start to seek that guidance elsewhere. I started to seek it in the streets. I started to seek it in mafia books, pimp books, pimping women out. It's crazy, it's absolutely bonkers. Instead of having a person put me in a place where, listen, education comes first, and this is what you have to do every single day in order to be successful and helping me out along the way, right? I didn't have that, and I had that as my excuse. No excuses nonetheless, why? Because once I started to get smart and started to look up different sources, the new sources of information were a lot better than anything that my father could have provided for me, and I look back, and now I appreciate that he left me because he got himself into some criminal trouble. He was a cop, twisted cop, and he got himself in some trouble. So imagine if he would have raised me, would have gotten me caught up with that. I would have probably been dead, locked up, who knows? He has to live in another country as a result. I would have probably been crying right next to him. So I thank God that whatever sickness or whatever problems in which he was involved, he did not involve me in those problems. He did involve, not involve my brother. Because if you are here, alive, breathing, healthy, if you're just alive, period, he, God, wants to see you survive and thrive or whatever you consider to be this infinite force that holds everything together. Listen, we are simply ghosts and flesh and blood, bone, walking around, driving around on a floating rock in space. So there's some sort of infinite force that keeps everything together. You wake up, you got the birds chirping, appreciate everything, every single resource available to you. Because when you find out that you have to be thankful for so many things, for the beauty that is out there, that is on this planet, the beauty of having shelter, of not having to fight people for food, of not having to take javelins and, have to, and having to spear a lion so you can make a burger out of them in order to survive you see how spoiled you really are. We're not hunter-gatherers, especially in this country right here. You're in the greatest country on the planet and every single resource is available to you. God put me in the place where I had the example of my father's siblings and they all went to school. And the only thing that motivated me to get to school was, listen, if I don't go to school, I'm going to be the only dumbass in the family, among my older brothers. They all treated me like a younger brother. But before that, prior to me waking up, like I said, I got guidance from killers, thieves. I grew up across the street from where President Donald Trump was born, Jamaica Hospital. Looked like Thriller. You had crackheads reunited there, waiting to get another vial, waiting to get that next blast. 
They're in the crack wars. This is late 80s, early 90s. And I got through that. I finally smartened up. And there are all kinds of excuses that people use. But as of now, I say, no, no excuse to that. And the other step of not using those excuses is forgiving people, forgiving people for any negativity that they have propelled your way. So until I did not forgive my father and say it and told myself, I forgive him for not being there for me. I could not be at peace at myself, at peace with myself. So if you can't be at peace with yourself, whenever it is time for you to grind, when you are working on something, right now I'm real motivated, but when it gets nine, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, I'm starting to feel worn down. And sometimes I gotta put some extra hours in, perhaps on a Friday, where I don't have to wake up so early on Saturday, in order to get through those hours when you're ultimately stressed, you got antifreeze leaking out of your ears because of so much content you're consuming or producing or doing work, the grind, the daily grind, when it's time to put that extra work in to learn something new, to take that next step in your development, you're unable to do it. Why? Because that will ultimately be that workload will be the straw that breaks the camel's back because you have all this stress all this anger, all this pent up emotion, like you're angry because this person did this to you or failed to raise you until, and until I did not realize that I had to forgive this person. I was not at peace. I couldn't take it. I would do all the work that I'd be able to complete. And once that was done, working hours are over, I went ahead and stopped doing what I needed to do in order to take the next step. I left greatness on the table. I was on Forbes magazine. I would have written every single day. I would have still been rocking with Forbes, but that wasn't for me. However, they wanted more content from me. So I got to the point where I dropped the content that I needed to drop in order to establish my brand at a certain place. And I got complacent. I was like, all right, cool. That's a paid off. I'm making five figures monthly. That's all I need to do. But if I would have taken the additional step, who knows where it would have taken me, but I couldn't do it because at that particular point in time, after I did nine, 10 hours of work, I just had to blow off steam, all that resentment. My father didn't raise me. Although I stopped using it as a quote excuse, I didn't forgive him for it. There is power in forgiveness because it will set you free. So regardless of whatever negativity that has gone your way, if you're still alive, if you're still able to listen to this video, if you're still able to do anything with your life, take control with your life. Now, look at what happened in 2020, the pandemic. First off, my condolences to anybody who lost somebody during the pandemic. I definitely lost people. My cousin, he was out of work for about four months. He still has to take deep breaths time and time again because he suffered from fibrosis of the lungs. My entire family got sick. Me, <clears throat> my wife, my two children, we all got sick. Now, one of the things that happened to me, I caught it light, fortunately, because I eat very clean most of the time. I minimize the amount of processed foods that I consume, mostly lean meats, fruits, and vegetables. So I caught it. The dude that gave it to me, he was hospitalized for like 11 days. But when I caught it, it fatigued me. I couldn't work out for like about three weeks and I was a little scared. I was like, maybe I go to sleep, I don't wake up again, right? What's going to happen? I left my life insurance in open visibility. I left it available in the event I didn't wake up and I was like, wow, what the hell's going to happen to us? I started to look on YouTube. There were a few natural remedies that I practiced with my wife. She got cured of it. Now, during those three weeks that I got it, that I was fatigued, I missed out on a lot of opportunity. During that time, the stock market crashed. I could have bought on a dip and enjoyed all the gains coming back up. A number of people right here on YouTube, they capitalized on vlogging, on all the stimulus and all this stuff, and they've got million dollar businesses. People became rich. So I can easily say as an excuse, no, because I caught the virus, I was not able to capitalize and do what I needed to do. But regardless, I still enjoyed growth with my channel. But however, if I 
take that as an excuse. I say, no, because of this, I'm not here in life because of something that happened to me. And shift the responsibility, shift the blame to something outside of me. And the next time that that opportunity comes, the next time I encounter the step to greatness, I won't capitalize on it because there'll be something else. There'll be something else that will stop me from doing it at that particular moment in time. Now, if you're suffering from a health crisis, you have to correct it. If you're alive, you can do it. You can do it. You can still survive and get through this thing. Now, once you're gone, there's no coming back from death as far as we know. So, and my condolences again to anybody who lost anybody. And I really feel for the people that have lost their jobs, have lost their financial security, have lost their health, their health is severely impaired because I know how bad it has been. But if you're still here, the one way you can stop using anything that has stopped you from attaining what you want to accomplish in your life is by controlling your own destiny. You do it. Go ahead, visit my spreadsheet. Like I told you, there's no cost for it. Bit.ly slash biz, B-I-Z, as in zebra, S-S-2-1. And the most powerful tab on that spreadsheet is the free education tab. Because through the consumption of that information, you will be able to do anything you want with your life. And if the information is not there, find it elsewhere. The, we are in the information age. Learn ways to make powerful moves. That's what got me to the position where I was able to work through the 2012 Barack Obama presidential campaign because I saw how much viral traffic was being driven through social networks such as Dig and Reddit at the time and how content on Facebook that went viral first went viral on Reddit and Dig.com and that still happens. You still got videos of me doing trick shots that have been viewed billions of times on Facebook as a result of the engagement that I initiated on reddit.com. I was able to do that by learning a powerful skill, learning how to drive a thousand people per minute to a website so a magazine can generate revenue and established a small magazine that I snatched from the stork. <laughs> probably prematurely, and I redeveloped it on WordPress and made it a leader in its niche to be recognized by the 2012 Barack Obama presidential campaign, perform all the fact checks, you saw the end result. And I have been able to work with some of the most iconic brands on the planet. Why? By taking control of my own destiny. And my call here today is for you to take control of your own destiny. Go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet, the free education tab. Yeah, the grants are lovely, but again, any money that you're getting through the Paycheck Protection Program, somebody even told me that they got the solicitation invitation to apply for the $256,000 grant through the American Seed Fund to commercialize your technically risky idea. So that's great to hold you over. You got the stimulus check. You got all this thing. It's good. But don't waste your time while you're enjoying that. If you can invest it into your education, into something that is going to enhance your skills so you're able to provide for your families, again, so you can feed your families to ultimately save this country because you got to remember, you're the one that does it. You're the one that does it. That's why I always tell you, sell something. Once you sell something, you are operating a non-employer firm, which constitutes the whopping majority of all small businesses, and small businesses constitute 99.9% .9 of all businesses in the United States, employing 60.6 .6 million people. Join the club. And as a result of me operating my small business in 2010, was able to enjoy more money coming from the Paycheck Protection Program. Look, I got a 20 grand grant coming as a result, far beyond the amount of support that people just get as a result of gaining a stimulus check. And what do you do? Get the information to do it. Go ahead, take a look at the free education tab on my spreadsheet. Take a look at the LLC tab where you can 
file your articles of organization for a limited liability company, start a business, and you qualify for more grants as a result, more assistance so you can take it and you can learn how to sell. The only reason that my organization is still around since 2010, some people, they're sort of like, wow, you've been around 11 years already? We're not going under anytime soon because of my ability to sell. As long as you know how to sell, you will not stop.